Many people have taken note of my tank top during that video. It's fairly frustrating to see people focus on my looks or dress rather than the substance of the conversation. But this video will discuss why I wore it that day. This was me outside my home on October 2nd of last year. The man in the right photo had just broken in and I chased him out at gunpoint. Shortly after, I was wrongfully arrested. I was wearing that tank top. But let's start from the beginning. I build low-income housing in the poorest neighborhoods in Houston. I specialize in a small neighborhood called South Union. This year marks a new record for me. It's the first time I've built a home on a street that did not have a murder on it. I'm no stranger to crime. My properties have been burglarized more times than I can count. It's important to start this timeline with a hard truth. No one has ever been arrested for a crime against me, except for when I personally arrested them at gunpoint. My trouble started just after council member Boykins proclaimed that he would shut me down. Problems. No parking signs were put up on Lee Hall Street. It's the only street uh, in the neighborhood that has no parking. Uh, our contractors, including myself, have been ticketed for various reasons. And to say that we're not being targeted or, you know, overly enforced would be an understatement. Uh, you know, we're even getting ticketed for parking off of the street, you know, on dirt, on the sides, on the culverts, things like that. It's a real nuisance. When we do park on side streets, we've been vandalized every single time that we've parked there because South Union is a rough neighborhood and we know that. HPD refused to deal with our break-ins, so we decided to start hiring the vandals for remedial jobs. This worked for a while. Our vehicles stopped getting broken into, but it only lasted a short time. One of them decided to smash my windshield in a dispute. This was a day after his brother had pulled a knife on one of my contractors. HPD responded to both calls. No charges were filed. Internal Affairs seems to believe responding officers didn't even file any paperwork. It's tough to describe the frustration of having a man destroy your property only for police to tell you they're too busy to go around the corner and arrest him. They give you an incident, slip, and they leave. It was clear that HPD didn't care. I decided not to be a victim anymore. That's me holding a burglar at gunpoint at my residence a year later. It took 14 minutes for an officer to arrive. The burglar received only eight months in jail and was probably out early. I complained of the police response time. The last time I looked at body camera footage of an HPD officer holding someone at gunpoint, backup arrived in under three minutes. I told HPD that if it ever took this long again, someone could be killed. One month later, another burglar enters my home and my live monitor camera company calls me. I didn't feel like holding a suspect at gunpoint again, so I watched as he walked a few blocks with my stolen property, fenced the goods for drugs, and then cracked out on the street for a while. How mad was I? The 911 dispatcher, after maybe the sixth or seventh call, hung up on me because of my profanity. Two and a half hours later, an officer from the next shift arrives, gives me an incident slip, and leaves. How do you even make a complaint when you know that this is policy? They've done it to me many times, but I did complain. Right as I walked into council today, I was actually called by a Houston police officer who let me know that in the past six months, they haven't been able to do anything about the drug house next to my house. Now, I had spoken to you guys prior stating that no one showed up on my last burglary in progress call with HPD. But he used some words. He said that there is a process and a procedure to these kinds of things. That process and procedure just happens to be not protecting myself or my family. Watching that video is hard for me. I'm sure people will criticize my clothes again. I came in dismay, knowing what was coming next. I broke down in the back room and mentioned to a council member that HPD was coming for me. He assured me they would not. I knew then that he was wrong. I began writing internal affairs complaints and reaching out to Houston police top brass including the chief's office. Nobody responded. Instead, they took my complaints as a threat, especially after I flipped a situation. An officer had called me as I was walking into that council meeting. He let me know that they cared, but not enough to do literally anything to stop the drug problem. I went to that meeting in particular because a couple had just shot heroin in my driveway. It was bad. The officer stated it was no big deal. Well, it was a big deal when I suggested that I guess I'll just burglarize his home if he doesn't seem to care. That was a no-no. Threatening a burglary is a big deal. It's only not a big deal if it happens to me. 
So, officers posted inside their main doorway my picture and that I was a threat to the community. Officers should use extreme caution around me. If you're familiar with how use of force policies work, you know that this kind of notification further gives them justification to assault me. They had to. I'm dangerous. HBD had a long history of inaction in my cases. In fact, the only time an arrest or ticket has ever been made in over 65 calls to Houston Police Department was when I personally held them at gunpoint myself. And it still took 14 minutes to get an officer to my location when I'm two blocks from a substation. One officer recommended that I simply shoot the suspect. Nuts. I've had individuals brandish pistols against me, pull a knife on my workers, smash my vehicle's windshield, steal from my job sites, including while I was watching it happen, and so much more. I don't even call HPD anymore, as I know they'll not respond. I guess they're busy issuing parking tickets or escorting permitting officials or giving out traffic citations. On October 2nd, they found their opportunity. I chased a burglar out of my house. As I was on the phone with 911, the burglar was maybe 100 yards away shouting threats and obscenities. I've been here before. I know that HPD might not show up. They didn't last time. I told the dispatcher that I would follow the burglar as long as it took for him to be arrested. That was enough. While I was standing in my tank top, a phone to my ear, relaying the location of the burglar, unarmed at this point, an HPD officer arrived. He immediately held me at gunpoint. He assaulted and arrested me. I was held for nearly 24 hours without charges and then released. You can only fabricate charges for so long before the DA has to make a case. There was never one to be made. Internal Affairs has already issued their report. These police officers did nothing wrong. Many people have speculated that we don't actually live there. But we do. We have to. If we leave the home, we do so knowing that burglars might break in as HPD watches. The burglar from that day, he was given a personal surety bond with zero dollars down and let out. I notified the district attorney as soon as he was given bond that he'd lied about his residence, contact information, and employment history on his bond application. I was clear that he had threatened me. He's a homeless, unemployed drug addict. I pleaded that they revoke his bond. They didn't. He skipped his last court date. The guy who threatened to harm my home is out right now. It's tough to argue that there isn't a real threat to my home, my property, and myself. I'm sharing this video because I want to help viewers understand. These officers who have wrongfully arrested me are the same officers escorting permitting officials to ensure I comply. My next video will talk more about compliance and the ways that I'm so easily targeted. I'll share the costs we all pay. Please sign the petition linked in the description and check out the other videos explaining this situation. Contact your council members and let's work together towards real change. In further videos, I will explain simple solutions to solve some of the issues we're facing.